Hello and welcome to this edition of Dr. K's Psychobabble, where we are going to be celebrating the Pass the Kindness event at Kennebec Valley Community College with an exploration of the psychology of altruism. That's probably a very important time in our history right now with a lot of people isolated and whatnot to still go out and find ways to be kind to one another, and that's what we're celebrating. But what is the psychology behind this? Why do we do these things? So let's start off first with the definition of altruism itself. So altruism is any behavior that is designed to increase another person's welfare, and particularly those actions that do not seem to provide a direct reward for the person who performs them. So these are actions that we take that are not necessarily going to result in some sort of reciprocity, although we will explore the concept of reciprocity as it applies to this particular issue, because reciprocity may have been, you know, mutual kindness to each other was certainly how this particular trait in human beings evolved. So here we have altruism in the ancient world. Now, as individuals started to band together and they started to work cooperatively with each other, there was a definitive degree of survival that was more likely as long as people were helping each other. So pro-social behavior helped all of the individuals within that band or within that family and whatnot. And so altruism and helping others for the sake of helping them brought those, those people together into groups. And being in groups allowed them to survive much more effectively. So this particular trait, of course, was very important in the develop of ancient and into the modern world societies. Now, it's not surprising that from these roots of, the, of being kind and altruistic to your, to your immediate surroundings, that the emphasis is often on kin and family. Those are the people that we are most likely to engage in altruistic behavior. However, they're not the only ones. There's many people were called upon to bring kindness wherever we are. That's sort of, again, the purpose of this event at KVCC is to practice random acts of kindness to strangers even, to people you know, to your neighbors, and to strangers as a way of communicating happiness and kindness to all the people that surround you. So. To get into kind of the psychology of it, what's happening in the brain that is um, a part of this? When we engage in altruistic behavior, when we do something kind and nice, although to, to strictly look at altruism's definition, it's, and you know, principally, it's not with the expectation that we're getting anything out of it, but in fact, we are. We feel good about it. And what is that feeling good about it? What what is that sort of thing? It does that have anything to do with the mechanisms within the brain? So if we look at some of the ways in which we present altruism, we can see that we have empathy. We have getting into somebody's perspective. And by perspective, we're really not saying, I'm going to put myself in your shoes and what would I feel like in your shoes, you're really trying to understand how that person feels in that particular situation. Not how you would act, not how you would feel, although that's you know the beginning parts of it, but ultimately to perspective taking really comes around when we can understand a per person's unique emotional experience of something. That allows us to gauge in empathy to understand that their experience of that is unique to them, and it may not be what I'm experiencing in that particular situation, and that leads to a sense of morality. Now, this results in pro-social behavior. These are activities that we engage in. Now, this can be anything. It can be a number of, it can be giving somebody money. It can be helping somebody out. 
It could be doing a chore for somebody. It could be just sending a nice greeting to somebody, saying something nice online. Maybe that thumbs up is a little bit, you know, supporting somebody's uh, efforts that they're doing online, going around and, and scraping somebody else's windshield for them, um, helping somebody mow their lawn, going grocery shopping, buying something for somebody out of, uh, for no really specific reason. And any one of these activities drawing from those psychological processes of empathy, perspective, and morality does in fact impact the brain. Now what happens is the limbic system is activated. Now the limbic system is a group of mechanisms within the human mind that where the emotional memory centers of the brain. Now this area of the brain is deeply associated with motivation so we so we again in that area of psychology where we see all those related words of motive emotion motivation motion to move and all these things this is an energy kind of want to speak of it in terms of how we might experience it this is an energy generating area of the mind that allows us to make decisions and move forward in our actions and what's kind of happening here is when we do something that is pro-social the feedback that we get from that the empowerment that we have to bring kindness to another person activates the limbic system and activates the pleasure centers of the brain. And so it feels good because there's a release of hormones into the body. I've done this good thing. I feel good about it. I think there's going to be some good results from it. And we may not necessarily see the end product of our actual efforts, but the very fact that we engaged in them activates these systems within our limbic system. Now, other aspects of this tie into the social world that this is going on and we get this sort of circular mechanism when we are with people and we are doing pro-social things and we're doing them altruistically it creates a model of an effective equitable society let's say so you have the limbic system and the behaviors leading toward activities where a number of individuals are involved in these in these behaviors for cooperative behavior that lends choose reciprocity which is i scratch your back you can scratch my back at another time but again doing things without that expectation is the key because those are what i would imagine that if we did something and you may have experienced this if we've done something that's altruistic but it was with the pure expectation that we were going to get something back that's not quite the same feeling that does not activate the limbic system the same way in which truly altruistic behaviors do so when we develop social circles and we are engaged in altruistic behavior with each other just being nice to each other being kind we activate the limbic system we engage in more cooperative behavior and there's reciprocity that naturally comes about because of that. So when we have an event like past the kindness going on, what we're trying to do is take that activity that is usually centered around kin, family, close friends, associates, and whatnot, and we're spreading it out further. We're encompassing more individuals in our environment into that world of kindness and thus expanding really the sense of kinship and family beyond the more traditional boundaries of where those exist. And so the true value of past the kindness is really going beyond the immediate people in front of you, around you, your family, your children and whatnot, who it's easier to be kind to them because they're part of your kin and you have that cooperative reciprocity process going. Imagine how powerful this is if we can bring it to much larger aspects of our society, our school, our work, our community. And the process, what comes around is that 
when individuals are treating each other with kindness, there's a larger sense of family and connection. Therefore, more cooperation, more reciprocity, and ultimately, a whole lot more happiness. So go out there, pass the happiness, do kind things to one each other, do, well, pass the kindness, actually, not create the happiness, do it to everybody you meet, and that's our way on a daily, daily basis to make the world a better place.